what's going on everybody welcome to another episode of modern day unicorns i am your host abby and today i have who you would find online as mr period nice guy underscore underscore one and when i introduced myself to him on instagram he told me his name and his name is julian so i want to welcome julian thank you for being here with me today thank you for the invitation it is a pleasure. So, um, we were speaking a little bit beforehand, mm -hmm. and you asked me a question. You asked me why I reached out to you, and so I want to let everybody else know as well. So, Julian sparked my attention because of, yeah, the quality of his reels and the things that he posts online, and also his consistency. Um, if you take a look at the things that he's produced, he has been on my feed every day for maybe the past few weeks that I've been following him and I'm just like I want to speak to this guy because it was very encouraging to me the way that he posts and utilizes his information but also the fact that he's always speaking to something specific now I'll, I'll dig deeper on that a little bit later but for right now I'd love for Julian to introduce himself and what he does and where he's from okay Hello, uh, thank you guys for tuning in. My name is Julian Bell, AKA Mr. Nice Guy on Instagram and all other social media platforms as well. Uh, I am a photographer slash videographer. And by definition now, I guess you would just say digital creator because I kind of float between the two. Um, I make a lot of comedy, uh, comedy, inspirational and educational videos regarding photography, videography and editing as well. So if you have any comments or questions, concerns, please let me know and I'll make something that's tailored for you. Um, Either later this year or next year, I will be also flowing into long form content, AKA YouTube. So the journey will continue over there as well. So we get past the 60 second clips. Um, but yeah, it's a little bit into me. That's awesome, that's awesome. Um, so where where are you from? And take take me back, take us through, you know, your educational situation. And you, you also told me you have a big imagination. I'd love to know more about where that got its roots. Okay, um, I'm actually originally from the DMV. We say that we're in America, so it's uh, DC, Maryland, and Virginia. I'm from Virginia, Virginia Beach, Virginia. Um, I actually moved out here to Texas when I was really, really young because my mom got a job in education, and so the pay was better. So we moved out here. Went from Austin over to Dallas, back to Austin. Now we're back in Dallas. Um, got my education. I went to the University of North Texas. I graduated last year, where I majored in. It's called media arts. I was really a film student, but they made me also study, you know, film production, television production, radio, um, podcasting, new media. If you wonder what new media is, by definition, it is YouTube, um, live podcasts like this as well, and social media in general. Um, it was a four-year program. I actually graduated in two and a half years, so I know my stuff just a little bit. I'm passionate about it as well. Um, so yeah, I went through that, and from there, I took a small hiatus before I started making content because when you study that quickly um you get thrown a lot of things are thrown at you so like i have a huge huge appreciation not just for american-based media or western media but also eastern asian um australian media like if there's anything out there that's creative and has heart in it i don't care what the language is give me some subtitles and i'll watch it even if there are no subtitles if i can understand you know body language and facial expressions i'll try to follow along um but yeah i took a break and i started this back in January, you can't believe it. It's only the end of May, and I went from about 2,000 followers to now about 11,000, knocking on 12,000. So, uh, yeah, it's moving rather quickly. So, uh, <laughs> um, curious to see where we are, are at the end of the year. And that's great. And it speaks to, you know, number one, your consistency and mm -hmm. your creativity, the way that you've been able to take certain situations. So I was telling him before we, we started recording that, um, yeah, the way that he's able to take maybe a trending sound or situation and be able to relate it back to what it is he's actually doing. One of the biggest things is that people don't know what they're doing. So they do anything. They get popular or they get lots of followers for doing something that they never intended to mm. do and get stuck in that media. So I wanted to commend you and, and maybe even let's break down, you know, why you got an Instagram and why you started creating content and how you were able to kind of niche down into your area or what your niche even is. Okay. Um, well, what's funny is when I began, I actually had that problem that you're talking about. I started copying other people um, just because I 
paid attention. I was studying social media, figuring out what worked and what didn't work. And then the more I created, the more I began to realize there are certain jokes I don't enjoy and certain trends I don't enjoy either, but I like the sound, right? I love the, the creativity with it. And the thing was, how do I take that sound and make it specific for what I want? Because um, I understand comedy, I understand you know, punchlines and timing, use the same thing, just change the words and keep the same facial expressions and body languages and things like that, but make it specific for creators. Um, so my niche, technically speaking, is it's narrow, but it's wide, right? So I create for the creators who are forgotten in the process. So people behind the camera in the editing room, um, even the models and the, the artists themselves, sometimes they're forgotten in the entire process, right? So people who get the jokes about dealing with Adobe Premiere, um, get the jokes about Photoshop and the struggles and your computer freezing and crashing, um, the struggles of going through a dry spell when you're trying to be a creative. So, and the people who enjoy watching the process, watching the BTS, um, they get it as well. And for people who you know, they'll look at a joke or like a reel that I've done and be like, this has a lot of views and a lot of comments. What is he talking about? That's how I kind of open the door for everybody, right? Um, and it's just, it's really beautiful watching, having the ability to teach people things um, as well as just kind of express myself. And you know what the crazy thing about this entire thing is? Because my jokes are so specific, you can tell the level of detail I pay attention to in my, um, my projects and also uh, the level of quality I can reduce and like my expertise level, which helps me get a lot more clients, even though I don't necessarily show off my work through my, uh, through my reels, but you can tell that I'm really confident with the camera. And if I can do this in front of the camera with a very small budget, what can I do when you give me a bigger budget and I'm behind the camera and have my full focus. So, um, my big thing is if you're going to be creative, that's fine. Just set a schedule, be consistent with it. But I try to explain this to all my friends who want to be creators uh, now, right? If you're going to do stuff on social media, look through the sounds, like trending sounds on Instagram or TikTok. Watch how many people are doing the exact same thing. And the question is, why would I want to follow you if you're doing what everybody else is doing? What makes you unique? And that's where I kind of found my style. And that's excellent and speaks to how you've had, a, you know, major growth in the last couple of mm -hmm. months. Speaking to all of that, I love your niche when you're speaking to those content creators in the process because we know the process can be a complete struggle. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, even I recently made an attempt to try to, you know, highlight certain things that we go through in the process mm -hmm. according to how we could possibly price certain projects so that <laughs> our clients and other creators could relate to saying hey like it's not a just a one minute video it could take me 12 hours to put this stuff together oh, or even more <laughs> so and, and only only people who've been through the process understand. can understand that like anybody that says oh yeah can you do a quick one minute video for me unless i can only press record and then press the stop button and it be done then absolutely not. yeah 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 you got BTS, you got the soundtrack, you got to use uh, royalty free music if we're doing that. Make sure your sound effects are on time. Make sure your beats, your cuts are on the right beat. You cut on the upbeat on one cut, cut on a downbeat the next one. So it's not repetitive. So if you ever attention, there's so many things that people don't know. There's a beauty in the details. Oh, man. Mm. Mm. <laughs> well, let, let's let's go back even mm -hmm. further. And if you could tell us more about what even sparked your interest in media or cameras and film, where did that begin? Oh, I've always been an avid reader in my lifetime. I'm a nerd, if you can't tell. Um, between anime and video games, it's, it's fine. fine. Um, but there's a beauty in storytelling, being able to bring people together. I paid attention with movies and television and like really good uh, books. And my favorite thing about movies isn't like the experience with the jump scares and everything like that. But the fact you can bring people from different races, religions, backgrounds, and communities and have them all sit together, and they all understand the pacing of a good story, of a good movie, right? They all laugh when they're supposed to laugh. You cry when you're supposed to cry. Like, you get it and you can connect. There's a beauty in that aspect. Um, so for me, it's just kind of understanding how difficult life can be and giving people a reason to smile, um, giving you... Not necessarily like a cheat code, but giving you somebody who understands what you're struggling with. And I can explain my narrative of how to fix that issue. Then why not? Right. Because um, trust me, if I can take your edit down from four hours to 30 minutes, it's a lifesaver. Right. So uh, being able to do stuff like that and just share the knowledge. And then 
I don't know. I kind of I kind of enjoy because I'm always learning. There's more than one way to do something, right? There's no right way or wrong way, um, quote unquote. Unless you're editing, there's definitely some wrong ways to do stuff. Pay attention. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, being part of the community and understanding that there's people I was watching on YouTube and different creators, and one day I stopped telling myself why I couldn't do stuff, and the question just became why not, right? Um, well, you don't understand social media. Why not? Well, because you don't take time to study social media. Why not? Because you don't have any free time. Don't you? Oh. Well, I guess I could watch a couple of YouTube videos. Well, then I guess I could upload a video once a day. Once a day. Be that's not my thing. I'm never going to do more than once a day. Because um, I'm going to burn myself out unless like I have like a team. Right? But it's always, if I can do the once a day, except for on Sundays because I want to rest. Um, if I can do once a day and I'm comfortable and I'm having fun, that's a big part of it. If I'm having fun and enjoying it, you're going to keep getting content. If I ever need a break, it's social media. Yes, it's amazing. Yes, there's a community. But I will always take a step back for mental health. And I encourage other people to do that as well. But, uh, yeah, I just kind of got passionate about connecting with people around the world. That's awesome. So I want to take it in a direction to where, especially nowadays, mm -hmm. you're finding a lot more people kind of skipping past the education part. So... Are you going to school for film? You don't run into a lot of people, even now, following that mm -hmm. same path. They're kind of just looking at YouTube, picking up a camera, jumping into a course, and going out there. And I won't say it like I'm not the same person <laughs> who can just learn by actually doing and did not go to traditional mm -hmm. school. Could you maybe talk about, from your perspectives, what going to school did for you and also like the fact that you did it in an accelerated mm -hmm. rate but now coming out on the other end in comparison to a person like me who i'm still learning the details even though i'm enjoying my particular process but what did going to school do for you uh, you want the the good news or the bad news first which one do you want i want both oh you're gonna get newses. both you just pick one which one do you want first um Give us, give us the, the, the bad news first. Bad news? I've actually picked up more just raw knowledge about creating from YouTube and other creators and picking up a camera and playing with the settings. Um, going out and literally shooting and making content is the best way to learn in this career field. And so in a way, I kind of feel like I've cheated out of my education. Like I have a lot of student debt that I don't necessarily need. We don't say that word. Oh, all right. Here. Student uh, <laughs> baggage that I have um, <laughs> that I don't necessarily need, um, which is a little frustrating because literally I got into some certain courses. I was excited to get in there. And they're like, hey, we're talking about the Kevin scale. I was like, are you, are you serious? This is what the test is over. This is a $5,000 course over the Kevin. Why are we talking about this? This is elementary stuff. Um, the good news is there are so many different creatives and different styles i was exposed to um and the thing is i got to learn the industry standard which is dope which is cool it's fantastic but there's certain things i disagree with um there's certain aspects I, I don't like whatsoever like there's certain lighting aspects for different people in different um skin tones that i strongly disagree with i believe you can light everybody evenly and correctly it just takes an extra 20 minutes to learn that process but hey what do i know um also, I have learned with today's medium, I don't necessarily have to worry about breaking into the industry by playing by their rules, right? If I can find my own niche on social media and I get a quote unquote handful of people to support me in the correct ways, I don't have to do a traditional nine to five. I can travel the world. I can, you know, create on my own time and get, get paid to be myself, which is a wild concept now. As an adult, as a kid, it's, it's, it's one thing. But when you actually start to see the paychecks, it's like, oh, I'm just being myself. Um, this is kind of fun. And I think I kind of found my, my path. And if I eventually end up on a big screen somewhere, cool. But I am perfectly content with the small screen because the small screen is what's in your, in your phone and in front of your face more often. And I feel like I can do more positive there. Um, so, yeah, that's just kind of what I learned. Good news, I have a lot of networking connections. I have a lot of friends who are creatives. Now we're all busy, so we never see each other. But if I have a question about like a shoot or a shot or an edit, um, someone's always a text, like a text or a voice message away. And you so. know, I, I like your answer because that primarily 
you know, I released a, a episode yesterday with a friend that I went to college with and granted the amount of baggage that I left that particular institution with, um, I'm not super grateful for, <laughs> but I am grateful for it. Yeah, of course, the connections that you make and the people who are in the various stages of life who you can see and support. Mm-hmm. So I can I can agree with you and I'm thankful for both of your answers. Um, because I think when you are taking kind of like the YouTube route and just, you know, learning by doing, you are missing the networking piece unless you intentionally reach out Mm -hmm. and build a community. And even sometimes that can be a little bit difficult depending on where you are. So thank you. Thank you for that. A lot. A lot of difficult. I think, I mean, but it's true. It's true. (laughs) Like I literally reach out cold to people to have conversations with or I find I struggle in the area of receiving the feedback that I need in terms of being an editor, right? So it's one thing for people. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there's two different facets, right? There is the social media to where it doesn't Mm -hmm. have to be that serious, but you still want it because you know you can do it. And then there's the other aspect of like, I'm creating a work of what I would like to be art. And I can't just keep on getting feedback that gives me pats on the back. I need somebody to say at 13.7 seconds, your transition (laughs) is late or your Mm L-cut is, is, it doesn't make sense. Like that's the type of feedback Mm -hmm. that I'm looking for in terms of making me a better editor. And sometimes I can't Mm -hmm. get it. Or maybe I'm trying to be too hard on myself for no reason, but either way, that's that's my struggle when it comes down to wanting to improve quality and like conciseness with the things that I'm putting together. Mm-hmm. I can tell you with uh, the niche I'm in currently, um, I do get that. So I started off actually, some of my biggest videos, I was only using my iPhone. And I used my iPhone first before I went over DSLR specifically to understand uh, the mindset of people who use an iPhone and understand I'm not limited in that aspect, right? Like, I think my biggest video is actually on Photoshop's Instagram page. Uh, it's a reel that's on there, which is really crazy to say. It's a it's a thing I use constantly. Um, but then I switched over to DSLRs because one of my friends was like, hey, um, you just casually have like $10,000 worth of gear just sitting around. Why don't you ever use it? And I was like, well, you know, because, you know, I'm doing the real thing. He's like, yeah, no, I, I know you're doing the real thing, but do it with that. And I was like, I don't have, I have no idea how to do it. And he was like, I've seen you put together a short film in 20 minutes. Come on now. And I was like, okay, well, um, so I started with that and figuring out the compression system for Instagram was a headache. Oh my God. <laughs> um, but after you get it, after you get it, it's just kind of, you know, cut, rinse and repeat. But I'll tell you one, don't be too hard on yourself. We're all too hard on ourselves. Um, like I have reels, I'm like, this is, this is terrible. This is trash. This is horrible. And I show my friends, I'm like, dude, this is, this is hilarious. What are you talking about? And then of course it's the ones I don't like I put up and those do well. Um, I just, I don't know. I'll just tell you as a creative, I think we are always harder on ourselves because we see the small details that people don't miss. Like I have an edit and I'll say, Hey, I hate the fact that this is corner that's going up there. Da, 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 da. And then my friend's like, okay, but how are you going to crop it? And like I'll crop the I'll crop it, and the whole section I was worried about isn't even in the final product. And like you need to relax, like you need to, you really need to relax because you're too hard on yourself. Um, but I think it's just more so we're at the point we're trying to catch up with ourselves. So like for example, I can tell you when it comes to just video content creation in general, there is so there was a period of time I kept watching YouTube videos. And I want to replicate what I saw, right? Which is just it's just human nature. And because I didn't know the equipment or the terminology at the time. I didn't know what they were mm-hmm. doing, which is weird because I watched the video and I saw I saw the angles and everything, but I didn't know what they were doing. And then, like for example, last night I got bored at like ten thirty, stayed up till two o'clock doing this, just playing with different lighting techniques. And I literally pulled off the single light technique, the a two light, so just the key light with your fill light. I pulled off a three light technique. I pulled off a three light with a reflector. I pulled it off with no background. Like for example, this is no background. I pulled it off with a backdrop, white backdrop tan backdrop, black backdrop, um, using a LED to color the backdrop. Like I just did all these different things. And by the time I was done, I was like, oh, this is a lot easier once you just like relax. Um, so that's my, my big thing for you is to say, just kind of relax. 
Um, if you ever need, you know, any type of uh, feedback, if it's if it's genuine feedback, don't show it to somebody who doesn't know what's going on. They're just gonna think it's pretty. <laughs> My mom does it all the time. She's like, "Hey, your videos are really cool," and I'm like, "Thank you." Do you know what, what color grading is? And she's like. No, but your videos are really cool. <laughs> um, then I have my friends who are like, hey, listen, your color grade is really awesome, but when you start playing around and like show people how to color grade from scratch, I'm like, oh, well, you put me on the spot, but okay, I guess I have to do it eventually. Um, so yeah, I'll just tell you, put yourself with your content, make certain projects, like small milestones. I've been doing that since I started. If you've been paying attention, you can see them make small milestones where you're clearly pushing yourself with each new post after a while, right? So mine is maybe once a month or twice a month, you'll see a video that looks completely different than everything else. And I'm tracking how well does it do with engagement? What type of feedback am I getting from it? Take those notes. I don't overly criticize myself. I just take the good and the bad and how do you progress onto the next project? That's amazing advice and I appreciate you for that. Um, my my follow-up question with that is your set or the set that you created where you're at your desk and you have your lights in the background. I really love mm -hmm. it. It looks awesome. Um, with you. that, do you batch create or are you a person that kind of develops things on a on a daily basis? Or how, what is what is your flow when, when it comes to that? So in the beginning... Sorry, uh, and for the people who don't know, batch favorite. creation is when you literally just take a day or a week and just create 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 so that you can have things to post for as long as you want yeah so in the beginning when I say my imagination is crazy like the beginning I literally would go find a sound at like 8 30 in the morning and have my reel done by like 9 15 right then eventually I grew up and was like hey listen this is awesome but I feel like I'm overworking myself so I sat down and every Saturday for the entire week I make all of my content in about two hours. Um, so I do my research, I understand which sounds are trending, which ones are about to trend. Even sounds that aren't trending, as long as you're creative and the content is either funny, inspirational, or educational, you can still do very, very well. So I find sounds that I like, I write down my quote unquote script for the captions, I make sure I understand what's going on, I put my lights together, I find my backgrounds. Um, for those of you who don't know, for each reel I make, I typically have a different backdrop on one of my monitors. Right, so it's usually a live wallpaper. It's usually moving, so it's either like an it's usually the anime. Not gonna lie to you, it's usually anime, and it's not just like shogun's. It could be a romantic anime. It could be adventure. It's like whatever. Just I, I find that day right, um, and so for that type of stuff, now I get to the point where I batch. Um, so I batch. I have my two hours throughout the Saturday, so I have the rest of the week to either edit or try to attempt to relax. Mm, I love that. I love that. Which brings us to our next point. Um... I want to know what what you did or what you when you decided to mm -hmm. give it all you have. So you've finished school, right? You are mm -hmm. content creating. So what are you doing and what when did you decide to give that thing all you had? Um, I know it's, it, for me, it's, it's hard oh. to even ask because it's not like I don't know if you have a traditional nine to five. But what are, what are the things that you're doing if you're enjoying? I do. Oh, you do? Okay, please. Unfortunately. Tell me. I do, unfortunately. Um, so, in full transparency, at the beginning of the year, I, I almost sold all of my gear and quit with photography, videography, and everything like that. If it wasn't because, maybe it wasn't because I needed the money, but because I kind of got trapped in a 9-to-5 uh, mindset where it was, hey, I'm off work, I'm kind of tired. Well, if I relax, I play video games. Oh, well, look, it's 10 o'clock, time to go to bed. Um, just that kind of, that cycle. It's like, hey, you have all this gear you invested your time and energy into, but you're not doing anything with it. Let's just kind of let it go and relax. Um, and I'm religious, so excuse me if for those who aren't religious. Uh, but I kind of said a prayer, and I was like, hey, God, I don't know what to do. Um, and it just kind of came to this consensus. Like, hey, I want you to give this 365 days from January 1st to January 1st. Just create. I was like, okay, well, if I make stuff and people don't like it, I was like, I don't care. Just try it out. I was like, okay, but what do I, what do I do? And it was like, just, just try it out. Use your imagination. Be goofy. Be yourself. I was like, okay, but because the thing is, originally people told me I played too much. That's why I didn't make content. Um, and they said, hey, and I was like, okay, well, if I just make a couple jokes or whatnot. Um, and I never watched the numbers. I just had fun with it. 
And so I looked up and I went from 2,000 to 4,000 and I started paying attention to the algorithm. And I actually did my homework, so this wasn't random. I paid attention to the algorithm, I did my research, understood the, like there's like a point system. For Instagram, it's reels, carousels, posts, like singular posts, then uh, IGTV or like longer videos. It's like, it's literally in that order, right? So I started making reels, I was like, okay, so I like making reels, this is funny. What are the rules for reels? How does this go? What is the SEO for it? Um, search engine optimization. How do I use the hashtags correctly? How do I find my niche? Because at first it was just a bunch of my friends. I was like, how do I find other creatives? This is really interesting. This is weird. Um, then I found, like, I found my audience. And the more I created, the more consistent I was, people started to realize, hey, this is just a random video. I keep seeing this guy. What is he talking about? And they started to, to follow me. And, like, it is so interesting because I'm starting to recognize certain account names from, like, the beginning of everything. And, like, seeing them. And, like, they're so proud of me. I feel like I have, like, second moms out there. Like, oh, my God, look at you. You crossed 10K. When are you going to be an official influencer? Hurry up already. I'm like, okay, listen, I'm, I'm trying my best to keep up here. Um, but, yeah, this all kind of started out. And I'm just now, what is it, end of May, about to be June soon. Um, so I'm just now getting to that halfway mark in the year. And I can tell you, like, I really like making content. Like, I really like making content. Like, I'd love to get to the point where um, I do reviews for stuff for people. So people are like, hey, like, even it's like two cameras, not necessarily against each other, but which one is better for your purposes, this one or this one, right? Um, so people understand where to put their funds at. Um, but yeah, I love this whole process. I love it from, from top to bottom. Like, if I could do this every day, I would. Like legitimately, I can tell you, I would do it every I day. I feel like it, the time is coming soon. At the the rate that you're going, I I'm going to you know I am religious as well, and so I feel like by the end of the year, you'll you'll have that opportunity to to walk away from that nine to five because your income will exceed you know what you got oh, going Lord. on wherever you I'm, are. I'm a receiver. All right, I, I want it. I, you're you're, you're doing your thing, and and what I wanna <laughs> what I wanna stress is that. Literally, the growth that you've had is because you've done your research. You post once a day, right? And you're just mm -hmm. you're just studying the material, and then everything else that you do is kind of like on your own time. Whether you're playing around with lights and things like that, but because you know who you're speaking to and why you're speaking to them, you'll be able to, you're able to create and serve for them, and still have a love for it mm -hmm. by not stressing yourself out in general. And that's the message that. I really like as I'm trying to spread things out and organize my mind for what's coming next. Mm -hmm. It is when you lose the love that it becomes a job. But if you set yourself up to where you don't you lose the love because you're still having fun with it because you've set your personal boundaries, you can continue doing it for as long as you want. Mm. That's the that's the beauty of everything. Um, but no, I like. I don't, I don't know. If I could do this for the rest of my life, I promise you, I would, and I'd be very happy to do it openly. So, that's always that's always a clue, folks. When you can make a statement like that, that's a clue that you you found what it is that you, that you're here for at least in that in that particular time frame. And I love to see that. Like, I think maybe you're like the second person who I've spoken to who's just like, this is this is it, um, and that's a wonderful place to be in. Um, and so with that said, I am going to add, we've got a couple more questions here, but mm -hmm. um, I am going to ask you, how did you overcome a fear or a challenge um, that you've had in this journey that you've, that you've been taking thus far? I can tell you because growing up, especially growing up with the internet, literally, um, watching internet culture, understanding trolls, racism, um, way things go, I did have a fear that I put out content and then people would hate it. Um, I also understand if you delete hateful comments sometimes, people come back 10 times. I don't know why, it's, it's, very, it's very strange. But I kind of just embrace literally the phrase of why not? Um, like why not post? And just kind of, okay, who cares who likes it? Did you like it? As long as you make content that you yourself enjoy, what's the issue, right? Um, I'm not hurting anybody, I'm not making fun of anybody, I'm not picking on anybody, my content does not do that and will never do that. Um, I think the only thing I make fun of is Nikon, but come on, that's just that's just me personally. Um, but outside of that, I don't target anybody in particular, and I make sure to make a point of never doing that. 
I don't make my stuff political. I don't make it hateful or harmful. Um, I literally make stuff that can... So you know an editing break. You know what an editing break is, right? You know exactly what it is. Um, a break while you take when you're taking while editing, mm -hmm. when you're especially when you're stressed out. I make content specifically, and I post it at a time frame so that when you pick it up, you're usually in your editing break or in your lunch break, and it's right there and it's perfectly timed. You're stressed out. You need a laugh. There you go. Um, that just kind of comes with times and understanding how the algorithm works for me at this point. But like that's what I'm aiming for in particular. So if you're putting out positivity in the world, eventually people are going to be positive to you back. And it's just kind of how I put things together. Um, so I know what my talking points are. I know where I'm not going to put my personal values and share my personal views on things. Um, I know how to keep it light, quote unquote. Um, and because I've done that, like I've made over 100 videos, 120 videos. I have yet to have a single hateful comment, mm. which is really interesting. Um, but yeah, I just kind of figured out what I want to do and what I need to avoid. And it'll come eventually. And I'm not going to lie to you. I'm probably going to screenshot it and like put it as my header for like a week. Um, I'm like, hey, you're the first people comment I've ever had. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, it's just kind of, I put it together was you judge yourself far more harshly than other people will ever judge you. And once you begin to understand that and you, you kind of get that feedback to yourself, you begin to relax. Mm. Um, quick question. I know you said that you are going to venture off into a little longer form content in YouTube mm -hmm. later on, but are you a multi-platform creator? Uh, so currently, um, TikTok's algorithm is so strange from what I can understand, because I try to repurpose my content from Instagram to TikTok. I do it constantly, right? But I begin to understand that TikTok is a much more personal application, meaning they want you to talk directly to the camera and they don't always want to hear the trending sound or audio. They want to hear your actual personality, your voice. Um, I'm starting to actually venture off and branch to new things. Now, Instagram is probably my bread and butter for now. Um, YouTube's coming in the in the future. And then TikTok, I'm playing around with it. I think my biggest video on TikTok had like almost half a million views. Um, so I, I, I get it, but I don't get it, but I do. You know what I mean? Um, so eventually I will become a multi platform tiktok is cool to connect with people but like as a creator to support yourself and you are monetized uh, on instagram yeah uh yes i am which is so interesting to, to say but i am thank you um yeah thank you <laughs> yeah i'll just say thank you it is it's a beast i'll tell you that much it's mm. it's a beast i'm trying to put the the reins on i guess you would say i'm trying to understand it um but yeah, we're getting now, there. Now, sorry, quick question. Does, does that happen after you reach that 10K mark or was it happening before? Slow answer. So, um, <laughs> I actually, so for me it was about 9,400 followers is when uh, I actually got monetized. And so what actually happened was originally it glitched out. So I was monetized and it was tracking all my views, but it wasn't paying me because I was ineligible. But I didn't have any strikes against my accounts. I didn't, I didn't do anything wrong, but I didn't stress about it. I just kind of sent a report. Um, for those of you who don't know, Instagram has this feature where if you shake your phone, um, you can send an error report out to somebody. So I took a screenshot of that section and I sent out the report, waited a few weeks and then looked up and the beginning or middle of May, they fixed it for me. Um, but at that point, I'd actually been in contact, like I'd already been featured on Photoshop's Instagram page. I'd already done some collaborations with other content creators who have much bigger audiences than I do. And everybody kept telling me the same thing. Your content's amazing, your personality's infectious. Keep going, it is just gonna happen naturally. Um, and once you figure out Instagram, fun fact, if you did not know, Instagram is actually the hardest platform to grow on. Um, did not know that. I, I've talked to a lot of creators. Instagram is literally the hardest because people are very selfish with their likes for some reason, but it's whatever. Um, if you can figure out how to grow on Instagram, you can grow anywhere. That's what I've been told. And everyone keeps saying that, yeah, yeah. So around 94, it's like literally 9,435. Because I remember that number specifically because I closed the app and then I closed it and someone DM'd me and I opened it and I was like, hey, welcome to Reels Bonus. And I was like, oh my God, I'm going to cry. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't cry right there. But, um, yeah so i think it's a combination of how much how big your following is and what is your what is it um 
not feedback, your engagement rate, what your, what your engagement rate is like. If those two are on an upward trend, then you're, you're probably going to get knocked on the door pretty soon. There's some, so there are some accounts out there with larger followings than I have, but their engagement rates aren't very high. Um, now I'm paying attention with the Reels bonus program. You get paid more, not only for views, but also for engagement. So if you have a lot of views, but no engagement, you get paid less for that, for that reel. Um, so yeah, this is in tweaking. Um, I think I have the, the max you can get for a month. So like for me, I can make up to $35,000 in a month from reels. I know, I know there's a catch though. For me to get the full bonus of the payout, I need 348 million views in 30 days. <laughs> and of course, I got added to the program as soon as they upped everything. Um, <laughs> I know it's it's a pain, but you know, God willing, I'm never going to shut myself sell myself short because you know the way the algorithm and the way the internet works, I could look up and look like I literally look down and look up, and something could hit me, get me there. So hey. If it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. I'm having fun either way. That's awesome. It, it's a little shady at the moment, but you know, at, at your oh, directory, oh, facts, I, facts. I feel like you're, you'll definitely look up and be like, oh, look at that. Would you look at that? <laughs> oh, if I do, I don't know. Listen, listen, honestly, if that ever happens, like I actually hit that goal at some point, I'm framing that entire month's worth and I'm going to put it on my wall. <laughs> you, you think I'm joking. I'm very serious. Like I'm going to put it in my fridge and it's never coming down. Um, It'll be my Hall of Fame month for the rest of my life. I but I appreciate the fact that you can celebrate those moments. Um, so yes. being able to highlight that and be like the milestones that you were talking about earlier, being able mm -hmm. to recognize that. And I feel like as creators, we don't celebrate ourselves enough because maybe you're too focused on the numbers or the likes or the you know if you're stressing yourself out about making content creation or content in general that you don't mm -hmm. celebrate yourself like oh man I like the fact that you figured out new lighting systems and i'm sure you'll go crazy with that in the next coming weeks but it th these are the things that drives us to create material for our audience to be able to serve them with new material and new ideas and new inspiration so kudos to you that's just now i thank you for the time that you spent with me thus far and at this mm -hmm. time i would love for you to share three tips that you want to give to anybody it can be content creators up and coming people people who are in school whatever is on your heart please share that with us okay um three tips i'll tell you one have fun um two you can't please everybody so just please yourself with your content literally make something that if you watch it yourself you would enjoy right um last thing stop watching the numbers so closely um, which I know since sounds counterproductive to what I do, but literally pay attention to how people feel about your content. So look at the comments, engage with them, respond to them. Trust me, wink, wink, tip, tip. Like that's a huge tip, especially for, uh, IG respond to your comments. Trust me. Um, and make sure you engage with people. That's what this is all about. It's not the numbers, it's not the analytics. It's about people. So have fun, make content you enjoy and engage with others. There you go amazing amazing julian please share all of the avenues that people can connect support like and comment uh for your content please uh you can literally find me it's uh at mr mr dot nice n i c e guy g u y underscore underscore one on any and all platforms it's the same thing so we're talking about instagram TikTok, or the clock app i like to call it twitter and you can also find me on, um, what is it? I believe it's called YouTube. I'm so sorry. On YouTube, I'm doing the same thing as well. That's amazing. Well, Julian, thank you once again for your time and your expertise. I look forward to seeing many more wonderful things from you. Um, for all our listeners, please go ahead and support Mr. Julian. Um, and also Modern Day Unicorns. Give us a like and a comment as well. If you are a Modern Day Unicorn or you know anybody else that is, please, please, please uh, DM me. All right, leave a comment. I love to continue to have these conversations. And until next time, we will see you.